Hi folks, Dan the Wolfman and here is my unboxing of the brand new Rossi RP63 six shot empty three inch 357 Magnum. Look at their Magnum carrier. This is Magnum Country uh, video that Rossi put out. It was very well done. This is a small revolver made for carry. This is the round butt version. Their longer barreled versions come with bigger grips and a square butt. So this is a round butt made for concealed carry. And it is pretty small. It is pretty light. It's perfectly what I've been looking for because I didn't want a five shot 357 Magnum. We got a six shot 357 Magnum that's light enough and easy enough to carry every single day. Uh, size wise, it is bigger than a Taurus 856. Here's an empty Taurus 942. Look at my unboxing video of the Taurus 942. And range review, 22 long rifle, eight shot. Look at my unboxing, 350,000 of you have my Taurus uh, 692, multi-caliber revolver Taurus 692. Look at that. But this is the same frame. This is the exa exact same frame as the Taurus 856 that everybody has, 38 Special, the 905 9mm, the, the 605 5-shot 357 Magnum. And this is just slightly, slightly bigger. If you put them on top of each other, you can see that the frame from top to bottom of the Rossi is a little bit taller. Uh, the trigger guard goes a little bit lower. This has a swoop to it in the back by the hammer. This has more of a curve this way. I believe the geometry is different in the grips. I haven't taken them off. So I don't think like a Galloway Precision Kit, it'd be nice, Rossi, Taurus, Caleb, someone let us know. Would that work on this? I don't think it does. I think this is like the R461, R462, like a re-release of that. But look at this beautiful revolver but it is very small i think it's smaller than a k-frame i haven't compared yet i think it's just a tad bit smaller than a k-frame they list 27.4 ounces on their uh website i weighed it on my kitchen scale and i was 26.6 unloaded so loaded weight you're looking at a pretty easy carry with the three inch ballistics two inch 357 magnum is really not worth it uh, and if you go with loads that are really hot instead of medium, you get too much recoil, too much blast, and barely any better performance than a uh, 9mm wood in a revolver, a 2-inch, or a 9mm wood in a 3-inch auto because they're measured different barrel lengths, uh, the, the measurement of how much travels through the barrel. But 3-inch um, is a different story. It gives you awesome ballistics. If you want to look at the ballistics charts, uh, look at my Dirty Harry Callahan, Manny Mansfield reviews the Ruger GP100. I actually put a lot of screenshots of ballistics data in there. And you can see between the two and the four inch, right at the three inch mark, they're really hitting good velocity and you'd get good man stopping power with old school loads like this Remington, better yet the Federal, semi-jacketed hollow point, 125 grain. These are some 125 grain gold dots. They're a little too hot split times in this. I did already film the awesome range review long and putting it through its paces with all this ammo you see here. Uh, but I did it with at the end with hot carry ammo, including this Remington 125, including old school Winchester silver tip 145, which was the FBI's load. And I have a lot of data how well that performed. And then a little too hot for this, uh, but it looks pretty cool at night. The Underwood and that's standard pressure, the Underwood uh, bonded gold dot. 125 grain. So nobody else is doing rapid fire on multiple targets and the stuff that I do to make sure uh, things are good for you to pick up and vet it. This was not set to me. This was tracked down. Um, I didn't get this free or anything. I managed to acquire it for the purposes of this review. And um, well, here you go. So empty, empty, empty. Uh, before I do, I'm not going to break the rules here. We're just going to see them insert here with this HKS uh, K-frame speed loader. You see that it fits the number one, the one that's Mark 10. So K-frame, Smith & Wesson, like 19, Model 10, etc. The 10 HKS speed loader, I'm bobbling, but it fits in uh, pretty good. It's just the angle of this. Or the wonderful Zeta Strips uh, K-Pack. I'm going to put them in there, but not strip. You do three, you rotate it over, you do three. I even did that with a different revolver at a um, IDPA competition 
It is kind of slow to re- reload a revolver. I believe, big believer, like fellow Greek Jim Cirillo of the New York Reload. So there you go. It doesn't come with much. The manual that talks about a one-year warranty to the original owner. This paperwork, which has a very confusing uh, limited warranty, limited lifetime warranty, but actually it all it does up here is talk about long guns. It's just specifically mentioning long guns. But if you go to the other side, uh, if you go to the other side on this one, so differently, it says without extending normal warranty, free of charge, Rossi lifetime repair policy, any weapon. This one doesn't mention original uh, owner. So I don't know what it's going to be like moving with Rossi Taurus Ford, uh, whether your original owner probably within one year um, only uh, or, or lifetime if you're the original probably, but only one year if you're, I don't know. Anyway, it's a little confusing in there. But um, let me just talk more about the revolver. It has nice hammer checkering there. Uh, I enjoy it on the other ones. Good checkering there, though this is very light mem. I like their hammer. I don't really like their mem release, but the checkering is nice. Okay. The grip. People don't like the looks of the grip, but as far as was it able to handle recoil? Yes, it is. Was my middle finger, because I have XL hands, pinched in there a little bit and recoil? Yeah, but I'm not like broken or bruised today, and I was firing some hot stuff. Um... So the grips, though, conceal very well. It's just like the A56 grips. I get a full hand on it, and yet it's rounded off really nice for concealability. Uh, I conceal it outside waistband at 3 o'clock. And uh, at the range, I also did draws and timed on the range tech range timer from a generic relentless tactical holster. That worked really well. Again, empty. Let's look at the double action trigger pull. Let me go. I tried stacking it live because I didn't have anyone. So there's a stack. If you can get to there, you can stack it nice. And a couple, that one got away from me. That's the same thing on the range. But a couple I was able to do very good accuracy with by stacking it there. Let's look at the single action now. Very light. Notice that it's a replaceable uh, hammer spur uh, there. Okay, instead of not being on there. So that's kind of interesting in today's modern times. Very light, very good single action. I did fire with three different loads at 25 yards in the range review. Please check it out. No one ever checks a range review. And yet you're talking about a firearm that's designed to be carried and defend yourself or in the drawer next to your, uh, you know, at the hotel or whatever. So nightstand. So very wide trigger that takes a little getting used to, but it probably allows better leverage on it. And um, swappable. I think I'm going to order the Taurus night sight and hope that it fits on there. It's the same roll pin it looks like. I just got orange pin on that. I didn't have orange pin on that. I would have done better with it. But I'm going to push pin that out, and it looks like it's the same and should fit the night sight I'm going to order on Taurus's website. So then I would have the very first RP63 Defender, because it's got a three-inch barrel, and a night, if I put a night sight on it, and then it should really be good, or I'll paint this bright orange either way, just like you see there. I have videos on how to paint that orange, and I have uh, video reviews on all these holsters pretty much, and the Zeta 6 strips as well, the K-Pack, and all that. So... Uh, fin finish is good for a brand new revolver though. Like I still paid like MSRP basically. Um, I wish the international LC. Why is that so bad compared to the other stamping or laser etching? I don't know. That's a little nitpick. The logo looks okay. Everything else fit and finish and function uh, was good. I had problems with rounds in the review, um, but it was actually a, a couple rounds that the overall length was too much just like my snubby versus uh, micro auto v- recent video, a Colt Detective versus a Max 9. The Max 9 had problems with overall length as well. So it can happen in revolvers and in autos. Uh, check your ammo before carrying when you load it is the tale of that story. So anyway, guys, uh, put it through its paces. First seeing where 158 grain pod loaded 38 semi wad cutters. And then some pretty putty for 357 Magnum, blazer-loaded aluminum. The aluminum is 100 feet per second less than their 
at least when GunSam tested it, uh, their um, brass ammo, 158 grain. Uh, some pretty warm in this other box, 125 gram XTP. So that's similar to carry ammo. I did a lot of rapid work then with that. They were hitting on with that. Check out the video. Uh, multiple photo realistic hard card start targets from targets online. Use code Dan the Wolfman. And then we got into firing some old school hot loads. Remington, green and yellow box. HTP, 125 grain, semi jacket, and hollow point. So I used quite a bit of those and a few 145 grain old school uh, Winchester silver tips in the old box that Slick 50 had given me. Look at his revolver collection. May he rest in peace. And then I launched four of the nuclear at the end of the cylinder. And that's how I'd do it. If you were going to use this in a revolver, even in a heavier revolver, I think I would use that in like the GP100 or something. But when you're talking like a 37 ounce revolver versus a 26 and a half, 27 ounce revolver, very different as far as ease of carry and the smallness for ease of carry, etc. So let's give you a little look-see again. Uh, okay, I didn't see that before. That's 38 Special 357 Magnum. That's pretty nice etching there. I can feel it in Braille. I can feel the Taurus made in Brazil there. Brass Tech, which Taurus owns. Brass Tech owns Taurus and Rossi, I think is how it works. Brainbridge, Georgia, but guys, why was that not so good? That's good, I, you know, all that. So let's look at the double action again. Oh, heavy, heavy return trigger spring. Very important for a defensive revolver. A lot of revolvers would click right here and click right there, and both would be false resets and you'd be jammed up. There, and there's all the way out. All the way out and back. Now what if I don't do it all the way out? Right there, it pushed it forward, and I'm not actually all the way out yet. But let's look, full lockup, full lockup rotated in the cylinder. This is a defensive revolver. I have tested other revolvers that lock up, and there's actually quite a few very popular and some more expensive ones um, that have false resets there and there, one or two of them, and this would be locked up. I might have missed one there, but all the way out to here. Okay, so that was the false there. But I never felt it because it has such a hard trigger return spring. It forces it to there, even though it's not all the way out, and it still fully rotates the cylinder, locks it up. So there was no no short stroking or false resetting on this revolver. And guys, if you're talking about a defensive revolver, that's uber important. That's something I pointed out in the Taurus 692 unboxing and range review. You should check out. So Taurus and Rossi seem to know what's up with making a revolver actually for carry when there's a lot more expensive revolvers, including 3 inch 357 Magnums, on the market that give you false resets. So I have uh, I've kind of uh, videos alone on all of these holsters. Here's a Bianchi. This one says size 2, made for K-frame, mid-size, GP100, Security 6, 19, K-frames, Taurus 82s, etc. It actually fits really well in there and snaps. So look at if you want to carry a 3 o'clock with no cant the way I like. Outside waistband, look at the Bianchi Cyclone 111. It says 2.5 inch barrel, but it fully covers the 3 inch barrel on that, and the snap actually works. Then uh, I like this setup. It's very comfortable, and appendix with a black or gray shirt on I had yesterday it actually concealed well. I was shooting with some sheriffs and cops, and uh, the sheriff, female sheriff said it really wasn't printing bad at all, appendix style. So this is an easy way in a generic relentless tactical holster of carrying various revolvers and pistols, and that worked out quite well and probably what I'll do. And I, it seems I'm actually better without the pad with revolvers, but with the pad or wedge with pistols, which is kind of weird, but come out of kind of my fat kind of hides, my belly kind of hides the grip and it works out really, really well. Here's a um, Remora holster, get the RFT so it stays open. I wouldn't recommend uh, striker fire guns and something like this, but a hammer fired heavy double action DASA auto uh, DA revolver. You're okay with something like this that might be comfortable around the house or if you're in a long car ride or you're a tow truck driver, something like that. Now it can slide out easier um, so be mindful of that, like if you're a mechanic or something. But um, this might be something decent. Look at my Remora Holster Fat Guy Holsters review. And I might order another one because this one's left-handed from Don Hume. I need a right-handed. I might get one from Don Hume. This is for a 2.5-inch K-frame. You see it sticks out a bit. But it's K-frame size. 
and it's not wiggling back and forth. It was wiggling back and forth in the L frame size uh, one that I have from Don Hume. So Don Hume is also very good to go. K frame, there you go. K frame 10 HKS 10 speed loaders work. The K packs speed loaders work. I think the night sight is actually going to fit. And now I got six shot 357 magnum carry please thumbs up share subscribe and guys watch the range review watch it with different ammo see where it hits learn some things about different weight grains and where they hit and how to run and gun in realistic ways at cqb distances as well as build drills from seven yards as well as single action from 25 yards and uh I hope you check it out. Thumbs up, share, subscribe, get down there in the comments. Have you ever owned a Rossi? And would you?